In honor of my 40th year on this earth, I am going to give you 40 money saving tips in this video. Simple ways that you can take into your everyday because truly the gist of really saving on a consistent basis is doing little things every day. Sprinkled in with a little bit of patience, that is really the magic combination that will get you where you want to go financially. Some of these may be new, some of them may be obvious, some of them might be great reminders. Either way, get a pen and paper, write down the ones that interest you. The ones that don't, leave those behind for somebody else. Also, share with me down in the comments, what is your one biggest, most favorite way to save money that you think would be beneficial to share with other people? Leave it down in the comments for the rest of us to check out. Number one, when you're not quite sure about buying something, you can't really decide, is this, do I really want it? Do I really love it? Ask yourself this question. If someone were to come up to you right now and tell you you could have this thing for free or you could get the exact amount of money in cash that that thing cost, which one would you take? If you would take the cash, it's very likely that you don't actually want the item. A real life example. Let's say you find a $20 shirt and someone says you can either have this $20 shirt for free or you could have this $20 in cash. If you are more likely to take the cash, then it's very likely that you shouldn't buy the thing. Number two, I had somebody recently ask me about meal ideas. How do you find cheap, inexpensive, and somewhat healthy meal ideas? Easy. My favorite little app ever is called Pinterest. Cheap, easy, healthy, simple meal ideas. Put all those combined in the search bar and you will get a plethora of information, of recipes, of ideas to fit whatever your budget and your health needs are and your taste are. Pinterest is a great place to find those great ideas when you're just really stuck and you're trying to simplify what you're making, but you still want yummy food for yourself and your family. Number three, I know this one's really hard for my crafty ladies. I know I'm a crafter. You're a crafter probably too, but we just have to say we're not going to buy any more craft supplies until we've used up what we already have. I know the Hobby Lobby is just, you go in you think, ugh, I get all these fabrics for all these quilts that I want to make. And I think, well, I need to start making the quilts before I go and buy more. So number three is before we go and buy more craft supplies, let's create something amazing with the crafts that we already have. Number four, if you can borrow something, then do so instead of just going out and buying the thing. Our neighbor has not needed a wheelbarrow for six years because he knows where it is and that he can come get it whenever he needs it. A couple of months ago, a piece of siding at the top eave of our home had popped off. We only have, I think, a 10 foot ladder. So my husband walked down the street to our neighbor, borrowed his 20 foot ladder, came back, popped it back in. We took it back. Didn't cost us any money. Get to know your neighbors and borrow the things you need rather than going out and buying them for a one time random time that you would need a 20 foot ladder. Who would have thought? Number five, if you are going to buy new clothes or shoes, wait until the end of the season. Buy clothes off season. You are going to be able to get better quality clothes for way less and they mark them down. The benefit of this, and I know there might be a little bit of hesitation, who really wants to go buy sweaters and sweatshirts when it's summertime outside? But I guarantee you, once the weather starts getting cooler and you go back into your closet and you see these great new items that you got for such a deep discount last season, you're gonna be excited twice. The time you bought them and got the great deal and at the beginning of the new season when you get to wear all your great deals. Number six, do not bundle a service if you don't need the service. I've heard this plenty before. Well, I went ahead and did the bundle. It was only $5 extra and I got this thing. Well, if it's only five or $10 extra and you didn't need the thing in the first place, that's 60 or $120 a year that you're wasting. So don't fall for the bundle thing. These companies will try to get you to bundle every which way they can these days. Don't bundle something you don't need. Number seven, don't overcook. And I don't mean don't overcook the food, meaning don't overcook the amount of food that you would reasonably eat 
including leftovers. A lot of times we get great intentions about meal planning and prepping for the week, but we really aren't going to want to eat that exact same thing over and over again. So be realistic. Don't overcook more than you know you will actually consume. Number eight is to make cookies and cakes and muffins from scratch. I had forgotten how easy these things are to make from scratch until we have recently been sick because there's no other time when I sit down and actually don't move to be able to watch TV. And we started watching the Kids Baking Championship from Food Network. If you haven't seen it, it's fantastic. But it just reminded me how easy it is to make these baked goods and make them delicious. And you save so much money by doing it. Number nine, stop your bad habits. I know sometimes this is absolutely easier said than done, but realize that in some cases, these are really harmful to you and obviously harmful to your budget. My husband and I are helping a couple that we know sit down and help them get their finances together and under control. And they were putting down the details of what they currently spend. And it really shocked them when one of them, just one of them, realized that their vaping habit was costing them over $300 a month. Multiply that by two of them, that is a huge chunk of money keeping them from reaching the goals they want to. Number 10 is to find a hobby, a frugal one. And I say this because I used to use shopping as a hobby. Bad habit. Now, YouTube videos are my hobby and it's turned out really, really well and I get to reinforce my money knowledge and share it with the rest of the world. But there are so many hobbies out there that don't cost a ton of money that can really help with that spare time you have that you can enjoy so you don't have to spend time scrolling on your phone or going out shopping. Number 12, before you leave a store, before you hit checkout on online, scan your receipts. Before you leave the parking lot, mistakes happen. I know many of you have told me before when I've mentioned this tip that there have been pretty significant cases of being overcharged that you have caught. So think about how many are not being caught. These machines aren't perfect. Mistakes do happen. Scan your receipt before you leave anywhere. Number 13, when you get a catalog in the mail, don't even peruse it. I know, it can be tempting. You get the magazine, the little catalog with whatever's new in style at the store because that's the store you had to place an order at a couple of months ago to get the sweater that you were looking for and now they won't stop sending you catalogs with all these cute things. Don't even bother. Don't even open it up. Don't even try to tempt yourself. I caught myself the other day. I was, I was in the middle, I was on page two and I was going, oh, that's so nice. And it makes you think that you need all these extra things. You don't. So you know what? When they come in the mail, they just go straight in the trash can. Number 14 is using natural light. I greatly prefer it. I don't even care if people walk by my office and they see that I don't have those nasty fluorescent lights on and they give me a weird look because it looks dark in the room. It's not, I can see fine. I have my task lighting with my lamp to the side and my window. My eyes are much happier than that un unnatural light. Even in your own home, I can't stand the big lights that are in the ceiling. If I need them, because I need a ton of light for something, okay. Otherwise, what you're gonna see in my house is natural light coming in or lamps being used. Number 15, you have to check your unit prices. You can no longer rely on seeing bottles or boxes in similar sizes because shrinkflation is a thing. They are putting less in bottles and boxes and simply changing out the ounces on the labels. So you have to be very careful to check your unit so you make sure you're getting the best deal on your grocery item. Number 16, not only should you go to the grocery store on a full stomach so you don't buy things that your hangry self might want, but you should also try to go alone. That way things don't sneak themselves into the cart. You can have more time to look at those unit prices. You're more relaxed and you can get in and out on time and on list. Number 17, if in doubt, you are probably using too much. Too much detergent, too much cleaning spray, too much shampoo, too much face wash. 
a lot of times they'll have recommended amounts on these things and they'll also have recommended times they need to sit. For instance, with detergent, I most certainly don't ever use the recommended amount of detergent. My clothes just aren't that dirty. For things like face wash and shampoo and cleaning spray, there's a trick here with those types of things. You have to let them sit and do their job. If you spray a countertop down and then you wipe it off immediately, it did nothing. So you've got to spray more several times to, on those sticky spots to get them up rather than if you had just sprayed one time, you let it sit, let it do its work, let it sit there for a minute and soak. Then you wipe it down. You're going to save more product. Consumables need to be watched so that you don't overuse them. Number 18, if you are leaving the house, take two things with you, a snack and water. Trust me, if you are out and you get hangry, you are not going to care how much something costs and you're more likely to get something that's just not good for you whatsoever. So leave the house. Does everybody have their water? Do we have a snack? Number 19, when you're making food and you're using meat, do it where meat is a side or it's incorporated so you can stretch it further. So tacos, that's a great way to stretch meat. Lasagna, great way to stretch meat. Even if you make something like meatloaf where you can add lentils or oats or potato flakes to the meatloaf to help stretch it and then still use it as a smaller part on your plate. It doesn't have to be the 50% of the plate big hunk of meat that's taken up because meat can be super, super expensive. So start realizing that you can save a lot at the grocery store if you start reducing that amount and using meat as a stretcher and a side versus a main course. Number 20, if you are drying clothes, don't dry them fully. Hang them up when they are still slightly damp. You're gonna get that softness of having initially been in the dryer, gotten most of the weight off of it with the dampness being gone from a little bit of dryer time, but you aren't going to use as much energy. Number 21 is to create a capsule pantry. Grandma was the best at this. A ton of people could come over with no notice unexpectedly and she could create an appetizer, a main dish, dessert, a great beverage to go along with it based on what she already had in the house. So create a capsule pantry. These are things that you know you use on a consistent basis to make meals for your family. That way when you can go to the grocery store, you can fill in just to replenish those things or to get your fresh produce and eggs, cheese, milk, etc. Number 22 is to have one streaming service at a time. There is no law that says you can't cancel and resubscribe from a new streaming service every so often. All you do is you watch the shows in that streaming service, go to the next one, et cetera, et cetera. You don't need three and four at a time. It's the same as when we had three and 400 channels on cable TV or satellite. There is no way you could watch that. And if you are, you're probably spending too much time watching TV as it is. Number 23, if you want to eat out, do so at lunch or during those happy hours instead. You're going to have just the same yummy food at way less cost. Number 24 is a pillar of frugal living. It's, it's simple, but it's effective. Don't spend money you don't have, i.e. buy now, pay later. You can buy now, pay later on things that cost 15, 20, $25 four payments of each. That seems crazy to me. If you don't have the money now, a good rule of thumb is don't buy it. Save up and buy it when you have the money. This is a great pillar and a foundation to set any expense against. Number 25, always check the expiration date on anything that you buy. I have gotten burned way too many times. So yes, those people who are standing behind me at the grocery store, while I find the actual, ex actual expiration date, which I think they're increasingly trying to make it more difficult to understand, you can sit there and huff and puff at me, but I'm going to make sure that I'm not buying food that's already or close to being expired. Number 26, stay home. We were all sick recently for over a week and it was amazing how much money we did not spend because we stayed home. So I highly recommend having a comfortable home and uh, games and just enjoying it because you don't spend money if you don't go anywhere. Number 27 is to try a smaller or a more minimal wardrobe. And the key here to, is to think about this. Spend twice as much, 
but buy twice as less. It's the same initial upfront cost, but it extends to cost less in the long run because you're buying better pieces, less of them, and they're gonna last longer. Number 28 is to decide what your priority is and don't worry about what anybody else thinks of it. If anybody thinks that I'm crazy or my husband and I are crazy for trying to pay our mortgage off super early, they, they can just think that if they want. But the peace of mind that's going to come with it and the fact that we have made this a priority and that's okay, how whatever you make a priority is okay for you. So if you have a priority of going on a great vacation, then you might have to deprioritize going for that daily coffee run. You can't have priorities that buck against each other. If you need money from your income to go and do this thing, then you might have to take it away from this thing, but you get to decide which one is the priority. Number 29 is to use your calendar for everything. And I'm specifically talking about the one on your phone because I am just not a paper calendar kind of a person, but if you are, hey, great, wonderful. If you check it out all the time. This is great for special occasions. You could have gift buying reminders. There are appointments, because sometimes if you don't go to an appointment because you miss it, you will be charged for not going. That's a complete waste of money. Set reminders to flip your mattress. Set reminders to change your air filters. There's no hard and fast rule that says the stuff in your calendar has to be just appointments and things that are happening. It can be reminders of any sort. Number 30, if you're really trying to save and you have a great, wonderful, amazing social life, you might have to cut back on some of your socializing activities. If you're really trying to make saving a priority, then your socializing activity priority might have to, you know, go on the back burner for a bit. And this is, you know, going out and socializing over drinks, which are so ridiculously expensive, going to entertainment things like concerts or, or sporting events. Those things are humongous costs now that are, talk about our out of out of this world i have never been kind of a event person so seeing what people are paying to go to some concerts or events I, there's just nobody i want to see that badly mm -mm, for that amount of money number 32 <laughs> drive sensibly there is no bigger waste of money there is no reason for you to get in an accident. There is no reason for you to get a ticket. Just drive the speed limit, stop at the stop sign, stop at the stoplight. Let's be a little bit more careful. People are getting a little bit crazy. And I guarantee you, the one thing that's gonna cost a lot of money is getting a ticket or getting in an accident where it's your fault and your insurance is gonna go out of the roof. Drive a little bit more sensibly, okay? Number 33, be intentional with what you consume. This is big. Social media, ads, marketing, news, everything that is coming in our brain. The, you need these 10 things now. You must try these 10 things out. You've got to check out the new, latest, and greatest. It's coming at us at a speed that we've never been able to recognize before. So we have to be intentional with what we give our attention to. Number 34, now is the best time of the year to negotiate or reevaluate reoccurring bills. Things like your insurance plan and your premium, your internet bill, your cell phone bill, exactly the things that tend to go up every year with their annual renewals. This is the time to take a look at them and see if you can get a lower rate. I've done this, said this tip before, and I've had some people say, huge amounts of savings that they've gotten because they've gone out and bid out their insurance or gotten a different cell phone plan or were asked for a discount from their internet provider and they've saved a ton of money. Number 36, I have a question for you. If you haven't or don't like the store brand of a food item, have you ever considered, if you do like going to restaurants, do you think that those restaurants buy the store brand or do you think that they buy the name brand of all the products and they use name brand products to make their food? Nope, usually restaurants buy huge buckets and bags of things that are basically the same as a store brand. So when you're thinking, hey, store brands aren't that good, 
I want the name brand. Really, really think about that. Is that just being marketed to you? Or does it really have a different taste? Now, I'm not saying it doesn't, but if you haven't checked out the amount of money you can save by buying store brands versus name brands, let me link the video I did where I did a comparison of 22 items down in the description box. Check it out. Number 37, this one's really exciting for us and it may seem really sim s silly for some people, but don't forget the library. And I'm so excited because they're building a new library near us. It's been going on for about a year. I am so excited to go in and see all the new books and the new setup and the smell of a fresh library. And there's the DVDs and the activities that they put on for kids that's all paid for in your tax dollars that are coming out anyway. Number 38 unsubscribe and I'm talking about everywhere social media on your email list on your YouTube where people are not promoting the things that you want to create and prioritize in your life or that you value do not feel bad for unsubscribing you get to make that choice but really sit down and think about what you again want to consume and unsubscribe from the things that aren't serving you. Number 39, invite people over. I talked about how we were helping out a couple who with their finances and we I've given them a questionnaire with all this stuff, but we're going to discuss it in the comfort of our home. We're going to make them dinner. We're going to sit down with them and talk to them about their finances over a great homemade meal. There's just something about not having to be rushed, going to a restaurant, having it be so loud and having the waitress look at you because they need to turn that table quickly and you aren't rushed. So inviting people over is just such a great way to get to know, to save money, and just to have a good experience. Number 40. It may be number 40, but even though it's the last one, it doesn't make it any less important. This one I love. It's keeping a list of all of your subscriptions you ever sign up for. And I mean every detail about that subscription from the username to the password to what it's called to the um, email address that you used to the cost to, to the card that it's on. Keep it in one spot. Go through this list periodically and see what you need to remove. Should be fairly easy because you've got your username or password, where to go to in order to remove it if it's no longer serving in any capacity that's helpful to you or that subscription's no longer needed. I hope you enjoyed this video of 40 money saving tips. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to click on that thumbs up button down below. Also hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you back for more videos.